What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw for TV. Before I get into this video, I want to thank Darren for your donation to the channel. Thank you so much, Darren, man. Thank you so much, man. I'm glad that you uh, like the content that I put out, man. And I'd like to thank anybody and all of you who have donated to my channel over the, the last couple of months, man. Thank you so much. And anybody that wants to donate to my channel, you can do so in the links provided in the description box below via the PayPal or the Cash App. And I have created a Patreon. I've signed up a couple of people already. I strongly encourage you guys to come over and sign up to the Patreon because you get to hear the totally unfiltered, uncensored, too raw that you guys used to hear on YouTube before YouTube started cracking down on free speech. But you get to hear me talk about any type of topic. You can request a topic for the low, low, low cost of two dollars per month two dollars for two raw you can't beat it you can't beat it now i want to just talk about do a couple of historical videos for the day man you know not much going on so i'm gonna do a couple of historical videos i guess and this one i want to talk about dennis robin and you know dennis robin's in the hall of fame he was inducted i believe it was 2012 and uh, that was, uh, I believe, 12 years after he retired or last played in the NBA. And um, so, therefore, he wasn't like what you would call like a first ballot, I guess, you know, which is fitting. But there's some people who feel like Dennis Robbins shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, some people feel like he had too many weaknesses. He wasn't a great shooter. Obviously, wasn't a great scorer, um, but I think. Oh, and, and, and besides the, the the basketball aspect of it, pure basketball aspect, some people think that his theatrics. Some people think that uh, the fact that uh, he could be a detriment to the team at times. Although I think with, with the Chicago Bulls, he really held that in check. With the Chicago Bulls and Detroit Pistons, he was pretty much on his best behavior, especially with the Pistons. But his tenure with the San Antonio Spurs wasn't good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but the suspensions, you know, the controversy, the off-the-court stuff, some people think it's a detriment. You know, some people think it helped them get into the hall. You know, it made them infamous. If not, you know, if not famous, it made them infamous. Uh, but me, I think Dennis Rodman belongs in the Hall of Fame. He's not maybe top tier, but he definitely should be in the Hall of Fame. And I'll tell you why. I think that when people think of Dennis Rodman, they think of the Chicago Bulls version. I love the Chicago Bulls version, okay? Didn't like Dennis Rodman too much when he first joined, of course, because he was a Detroit Piston. Although my memories of the bad boy Pistons is a little bit faulty, you know what I'm saying? Like... Uh, I remember them, but I wasn't really watching basketball in the late, late 80s. I didn't start watching basketball until 1990. I was a little bit late to dance. So I wasn't really watching them when they were kicking the Bulls' ass constantly. You know, so I was on the tail end of that. The first full year that I started watching basketball, the first because I started watching basketball during the 1990 playoffs, which was the Pistons' second championship. So the first full season I started watching basketball was the first full year that the NBA came on NBC. Today, the Chicago Bulls faced the Boston Celtics. We're at a capacity crowd here in Chicago Stadium. Larry Bird is questionable for tonight's contest with a hailing back, but Bird vows to play. Dun, 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 dun. Michael Jordan has averaged over the last four games 35.8 points. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just, but you know, it was a beautiful time, man, for watch basketball back then, man. But, um, yeah, I came in around that time. But anyway, getting back to my point. Got carried away. The Chicago Bulls' Dennis Rodman wasn't the best version. The best version of Dennis Rodman 
was the early 90s version of Dennis Robin. I mean, he still was great defensively. You know what I'm saying? He could still shut shut guys down. You know, at that advanced age for a basketball player, you know, when he was with Chicago, what was it, 35, what, 34, 35, 36, 37? Um, to be... You know, in the shape that he was in, it shows you how much of a workhorse he was and how well he took care of his body. Um, But when he was with the Detroit Pistons, he was arguably the best defensive player in the NBA. Definitely a case for the best, the most versatile defensive player, especially in the early 90s. Um, I think the best defensive players at that time, I would say, were probably Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman, Alvin Robertson, David Robertson, uh, Kim Olajuwon. Uh, now, Manute Bowl was a shot blocker. You know what I'm saying? Mark Eaton, shot blocker. But I'm talking about like, you know, they, 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 they deserve mention, you know. But those were, I think, the best defensive players in the league. Joe Dumars, those were the best Defensive players in the league, Gerald Wilkins, you know, those are the best defensive players in the league. Um, <clears throat> but Dennis Rodman, to me, throughout his career, was one of the top defensive players. But the thing that really separated him from from everybody else, and we know what it is, it's the rebounding. Dennis Rodman, when you use advanced metrics, is the greatest rebounder in history in the NBA. Now, it seems kind of far-fetched and hard to believe because you, you think to yourself, well, wait a minute. You, you had guys like, I mean, Dennis averaged 13 rebounds per game, which is high. But then you say to yourself, well, wait a minute. Uh, Nate Thurman averaged 15 rebounds a game. And, you know, um, Bob Pettit averaged 16 rebounds per game. Jerry Lucas, I think, averaged like, maybe 15 and a half or something like that, you know, and, and then you had guys like, uh, you know, Bill Russell, 22 and a half, well, 23. How in the world this guy that averaged 13 rebounds per game is the greatest rebounder of all time? And it's simple. It's pace. It's pace and it's rebound percentage. Those guys were playing, you know, most of those guys I named, they played in the era where the final score could be like, you know, uh, one. the average final score was 120 to 118. That was the average score. Whereas during the late 1990s, the average score could be, you know, 81-79. And you had far fewer possessions. So in a game where, let's say, Wilt had 27 rebounds as a team, you know, his team might have had 70 rebounds altogether. Whereas with Dennis Rodman, if he had 15 rebounds, as a team, the Bulls only had 35. Like half. So his percentage of the rebounds were much greater. Uh, I think he holds the all-time record for rebounds, uh, like grabbed. What, what's that, what is that stat I saw? Uh, he has the highest rate as far as I think rebounds, like uh, like most rebounds per like all opportunities or some shit like that. It's some stat I saw, and um, virtually all of the, the rebounding metrics put him at number one. Maybe a few put him at number two, but he's pretty much the greatest rebounder we've ever seen, man. And uh, the numbers reflect that in another sense, you know. Uh, he won seven consecutive rebounding titles. And I think he would have probably had a couple of more rebounding titles if he had became a starter sooner. I don't think that Dennis Rodman became a full-time starter until I believe like his fourth season, you know, like, like his fourth season. And even the years when he led the league in rebounding, he generally played between 32, 33 minutes per game. The one year when he played 40 minutes, he averaged 19 rebounds. You know, so he was a very accomplished player, and he was an exciting guy to watch. I mean, at least for me, because I love defense. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know you guys like the scoring and the three-pointers and all that, man. But give me, give me, I know Quest X talked about this too. He, he, you know, he's he, he's in the same, you know, category as I am. Give me those slugfests, you know, uh, tough-nosed, defensive-anchored, you know, half-court, late 90s games where the final score was 77-75. You know what I'm saying? I understand the need for a run-and-gun game every now and again because you, you do admire the beauty of offense. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy those, uh, you know, 133-127 Western Conference games back in the 90s because they had those games too, especially with Run TMC. The Phoenix Suns could, could fill them up, you know, when Charles Barkley was there. You know, there were some teams that could do that. The Golden State Warriors, even though they they weren't a very good team all, all together, they had some good offensive players uh, during the, uh, the 1990s after run TMC too. So don't get me wrong. I like those types of games and spells, but I love the, the tough defense because you don't get any cheapies. Uh, great scorers then are forced to go into their bag of tricks and, 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 and show you what makes them great scorers. That's why I admire guys like back then, Anthony Hardaway, of course, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. As I've said before, if you put those guys, and Anthony Hardaway, <clears throat> I might need to do a video about him. Anthony Hardaway and Grant Hill, but definitely Anthony Hardaway. I think if you put Anthony Hardaway in today's NBA game, people wouldn't be talking about LeBron James as much as they do now. That's all I'm going to say about that. And anybody that thinks that, you know, I'm exaggerating with that, you don't know Anthony Hardaway. But Dennis Robin was a piece. You know, saying a very exciting piece. You you love the energy that he, he displayed and, 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 and the you can see the joy and passion that he had, you know what I'm saying? And he brought a he brought so much energy and he fired the crowd up and he was often the guy that made the um, the crowd the sixth man because he inspired them, you know? And he was Chicago. He was gritty. He was, you know, um, blue collar. You know what I'm saying? No airs about him. He fit right in with Chicago. And he was a part of those three championship teams. He kind of lulled a little bit that third season, you know what I'm saying? He kind of was drifting a little bit. But the first two seasons, he was great. I'm talking about as far as like uh, being on level with the, the team and, and his head totally into it. Um, and of course, he won three NBA championships with Chicago Bulls, two the Detroit Pistons. So he won five NBA championships altogether. He won back to back defensive player of the year awards. And of course, he was a seven time rebounding champion. I can't remember how many all star teams he was won, but I think it was only something like two. I think it was only like two or three. So he wasn't really part of uh, like all-star teams. But I will say this. <clears throat> the Eastern Conference was kind of stacked. You know what I'm saying? When he was there, especially at that position. Power forward. Um, so there were other guys that you know, were more, uh, there were other players, I guess I would say, that were more accepting or more, uh, you know, deserving, I guess I'm trying to say, of that, of those all-star spots, you know what I'm saying, when you think of throughout the 1990s as far as power forwards are concerned. Um, but I think he's, he's, he's definitely a Hall of Famer, you know what I'm saying, and, and and that's pretty much my thoughts on that, man. But tell me what you guys think, man.